Morning Talk with Siki Mgabadeli. Siki Mgabadeli. 24 minutes to 11. No, it means it's time to talk psychological matters with uh, Joanna Cluvulu, and she's clinical psychologist and director of the Psych Matters Family Therapy Center in Bedford View. And today, talking about abuse in relationships and why um, a woman stay and what happens in those situations. I think it's a very significant and vital topic to talk about this month, mm-hmm. given that it's Women's Month and it's about honoring the women that we are. Yeah. Um, so, so bringing up this topic in terms of what, what, where women are left feeling when abused, and we you know the question is to the obvious question: someone gets abused, why stay? Just mm. up and leave, make the decision to leave. Why is it so difficult yeah. for women then to stay? Because that's always the question, and especially for those who've never been in that situation, it just doesn't make sense um, to them. So we're going to talk a bit about that, but I want to take your calls as well on 0891104207, SMSs to 34701. As we know, there's different types of abuse. We talked, um, I think it was last week or the week before, um, about uh, the Domestic Violence Act, and it lists a whole number of things, so economic, emotional abuse, and physical. So I wanted us to also just make sure that we keep it as broad as possible. Absolutely. Because there's different types of abuse. Isn't Absolutely. There? Absolutely. So firstly, I'd like to say that, you know, abuse doesn't discriminate. It it doesn't, it affects rural and um, urban, uh, urban, mm-hmm. urban. It affects poor and rich. It affects black and white. It affects the educated and uneducated. It really touches on, on everybody, adults, children, mm-hmm. teenagers. No person should f- live in fear of the person that they love. We, every single human being has the right to be respected. Mm-hmm and has the right and deserves to be valued and and feel safe in a relationship. So I think that is the starting point. Then the opposite of that would be um, abuse then uh, addresses, like we said, the physical abuse, sexual abuse or sexual harassment, Mm. um, emotional, psychological abuse, which is often very difficult to pinpoint because there aren't really any physical scars to show. So there's a number of of, of ways of, 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 of categorizing abuse. Um, but what is often important to understand and make women understand that what we feel inside often gets mirrored outwardly. Mm. So the signs often are there, whether you're friends or family, you will be able to see mm. um, how, how your part or your, your, your significant f- friend or, or family member is, is changing in their behavior t- to be able to address and identify that there being a problem. Mm. Um, often many women get left feeling voiceless and powerless and, and they often feel like they don't have the, the, the courage or the the belief that they can take that step, the action steps to to change their circumstances. Mm. And maybe let's talk about those signs because I think um, it's it's very important that family members or friends know what to look out for because often, um, you know, the the, the person who is the victim of abuse will keep quiet, will try and make excuses for, you know, you hear people saying, I walked into a door, I slipped and fell. Absolutely. When you see them with a bruise or um, a a blue eye or a black eye. Or they wear, you know, long jerseys to cover up any sorts of scars in 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 the summer months. So some of the some of the signs and symptoms to look out for if you're a family and friend. It's that these people, your significant friends, seem afraid or anxious to please their partner. They go along with everything that their partner says. They don't have a voice or a, a way of, of expressing a difference of an, of an opinion. They're often making excuses mm. about um, why they cannot join up on a, on a family or social gathering. Um, frequently are absent from work or from, from family or social gatherings. Mm. Um, their behavior has changed. So somebody that's been quite an extrovert and quite chatty suddenly becomes very withdrawn and, and anxious or, or, or kind of goes back into in, into the scene rather mm. than engaging with people. Um, they often dress in clothing that are, are quite, um, um, they specifically hide bruises or scars um, or wear sunglasses, you know, in, 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 an, in an indoors, absolutely. Um, they're often getting frequent or harassing phone calls. So the are signs that often family family members can look out for but for you as an individual how do you know that you are being abused and Mm. I think the single word that we can identify is your partner intentionally um, makes you feel or takes back takes over control over you so Mm. there's a difference between feeling because every human right has the right to feel they're in control of their lives and and the ability to make choices for themselves Mm. but when you feel like your partner is taking control over you 
for their, with a purposeful intent to uplift themselves or to make themselves feel better than you, to rise above you, rather than making you feel like an equal to them, then they are, these are signs that, that you possibly are being abused. So if we can look at the word control, mm. and that, that is the one theme that we often see in, in many women that feel powerless. Um, so some of the questions that you can ask yourself, are you afraid of your partner most of the time? Do you feel you deserve to be hurt or mistreated? Mm. Which often goes back mm. to this was my fault. Yeah. Or I feel ashamed. I, I should have, I asked for this. I, I should not, I, I have no right to make, uh, make a different choice. Do you feel powerless, helpless or emotionally dead or numb inside? And therefore, there's this perpetual re-abuse or re-experiencing of the abuse because you don't feel anything anymore. Mm. So it becomes five or 10 or 20 years of the sameness. Is your partner excessively jealous and possessive over you? Often when we talk about a- abuse, um, our, our cognitions or thinking patterns change. Our emotions mm. get affected and our coping styles shift. So, for example, many, many women have this belief, this distorted belief that I deserve this. Mm. Um, or this belief that um, I, I, I deserve to be humiliated. I don't deserve any different treatment. They often come from um, um, of, or come from abusive family members or, or, or homes where it becomes a sense of familiarity. So they don't know really any difference. So that sense of fami- familiarity often becomes a, se- a sense of safety for them. Mm. So it's a distorted view mm. of of how they they experience healthy relationships. Emotionally, they they are they are either used to having um, unpredictable, dramatic chaotic um, emotions and, and that is often what drives the relationship. They have this distorted view that love is about excessive mm, passion. If he doesn't, I mean you hear people saying if he doesn't beat me up it means he doesn't love me. Absolutely. So it's a distorted view of love. Mm. N- not understanding what love really is all about. What is respect? What is it, what is it like to feel safe? What is it like to, 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 to know that you have a right to express yourself and that you do have a voice? You know, we many, many women can relate to the sense that in a, a patriarchal society that women didn't have a voice, that we have to submit to our partners. You know, sometimes religion in some way also so talks about, you know, relationships having to stay together. You know, we, you know, marriage is forever, which, mm. which we all hope to achieve, yeah. but then at the detriment of, of your own personal human rights. And, and the, the, the rights of what the law is there to protect us for. Uh, for. Um, does your partner limit your access to, to finances and the freedom to move, mm. um, freedom to communicate? So yeah. do, they, do they take your cell phone? Do they limit your access to your, to your finances, especially if it's something that you have contributed to? Mm. Um, and often making you feel very alone and, and isolated from the world. And that is often the starting point uh-huh. and the sense of belittling. Yeah, so it's, I suppose sometimes it starts with isolating you from your family and your friends. So you're always with this person. And they almost become your safety net. And then they start restricting your access to other people. Absolutely. And then it's, then it's the constant um, belittling and, mm. and the mind, mind games that come with um, you, you don't deserve anything better. You will not make it out in the world. You can't do mm. this. You aren't able to make it without me. Mm. So leaving this person completely helpless and powerless, meaning... Powerless means I, I do not have the action steps to make a difference or to take the action steps away from this abusive situation. Helplessness, feel, feeling like I, I cannot speak out, so my hands are tied. It's mm. that, that kind of feeling. So that's why many, many, many women find it very difficult to step out, and they often feel like they're the only ones. Mm. All right, we're going to take calls as well on this one on 0891104207, SMSs 34701. What I do want to talk about, and I suppose we'll deal with, we've been talk, touching on it now a little bit, why the, why women stay, and then I suppose then to talk about how to get out. Yes, what absolutely. are the steps um, of, of getting out? So the staying is because you are literally boxed in, I suppose, and that power, the, your power is completely taken away from you. Your perception the that perception your power, your that perception that your power has been taken away from you, and and the, really this this talk is about letting women know that we do have a voice, and that it is about finding whether it's many, many little action steps, whether it's making sure that your car is filled up, making sure that you communicate to a family member or a friend that you can trust mm. that this is actually what is going on. Um, 
knowing that you absolutely do have a voice. Often women that have the courage to step out are the women that know when their children are often affected, when they know that this is not just mm. this is not just affecting my life, but the lives of my children. And and the motherly instinct then kicks in and I say, no more. Um, so whether it's little things that you do every day to, to recognize that you do have a voice. Mm. And the children, I was going to talk about the impact on children because is, isn't that also sometimes one of the reasons women stay? Absolutely. Because they don't want to break up the family or or whatever. So it is very much a paradox, isn't it? Because on the one hand, they often feel... Um, I, I don't have the finances. I cannot financially support myself and my mm. children. Um, the, the, the fear of change, the unknown, what will happen should I take the step away from this this house um, with the kids in the school, um, to having to relocate, going into a place of safety. Um, the, you mm. know, often often women get kids manipulated into um, if you don't if you leave me, I will commit suicide. So it's often the manipulation mm. of the fear of of this partner ending it, or whether I the fear of them, you know. Know, them killing or you know homicidal tendencies mm. I will kill you and your children so we don't know what messages often women are, 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 mm. are given so it's this, this terrifying feeling of if I leave something fearful will happen to me and my children and if I stay mm. something terrifying will happen to me and my children too so often women get left in this this a, a limbo yeah. state of if I leave it's, it's terrifying if I stay it's terrifying so it's, they're in a state of terror. And what's the emotional impact of that, you know? Absolutely. So often women, in the way to survive, they often work on the, the short-term survival s- skills. So every day is a, is a day of, I, I got through this day and I'm, I, I've survived this day. Mm. So they look at short-term coping strategies rather than focusing on the long-term um, and the long-term impact that this 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 has had on them and and their children, so they lack then the the insights to recognise what is actually perpetually happening now and the future impact of of, the, of this and on their children. Um, they often are left feeling very numb, so a deadness inside, mm. an emptiness. Um, or often, some women will feel extreme feelings of of terror, terror and anxiety, and and that is often coupled with what they often were left feeling when they. If they work, you know, if they've come from homes of, of, of abuse, which then, you know, it's something that they do feel, feel familiar with. So they either take control by uh, meeting their husband or their partner's needs mm. um, to to minimise their own. And when you are trapped in that in that cycle, right, um, and you have no one to speak to, and you want to leave but you don't know how. Here's my fear is we've seen the high levels of, of you know, women abuse in this country, uh, physical, sexual, whatever you want to call it. And there's a sense that it's something that's not taken very seriously. Um, we're not making big examples out there of people who are the, of the perpetrators. Therefore, if you are a woman who's got no one, you cut off and you watch what's going on outside, what's going to make you want to step out mm. and become a statistic? Well, the st- st- statistics do say that a quarter of women worldwide have experienced some form of abuse in their lives. And that is, I mean, a quarter, that's one in every four women have experienced some form of being minimized, belittled, um, physically attacked, sexually harassed, and, and economically withheld of, of their finances. I mean, mm. that is quite a scary statistic. But to answer really your question is, you know, women have this also this um, insatiable gift of community. Yeah. And one of the gifts that we do have is that we've got an incredible way of connecting, whether it's connecting with our children, whether it's that motherly instinct to love and care, um, whether it's to, to, to have that the, the nest feeling. And so if we can remember that and, and keep that in mind, then you know that your neighbor, perhaps yeah. your neighbor or someone, mm. one in four of your neighbors have experienced the same thing, that you really aren't alone. There's an organization called Power, uh, People Opposing Women Abuse. Yeah. Um, there's a non, you know, an, uh, it's an NGO that, that has a toll-free helpline number. So there are people that are actively make, taking steps to really um, um, help you understand that you really aren't alone and that you do have a voice, that it really isn't your fault, that no one deserves to be treated like this, and that you do have rights, that the, the government has put very clear steps in place. Um, the Bill of Rights really talk about, uh, you know, this being a criminal act. So, you know, you go to your police station, you phone the emergency services, mm. you can put an interdict against your partner. There are many ways that you really can take steps. Um, 
and personally remind yourself of the strength that you do have that you know you can take back your own control that you do have a voice and having mm. you know forums like this to inform to women talk to it, talk yeah. about that and ha- commemorating women's month means that you know we are valued to some degree and that and that we need to remember and value ourselves that we need to honor ourselves on a daily basis recognize within ourselves and to take ownership for what we what we are responsible for our esteem our bodies how we value and love and respect ourselves taking steps every single day to to mirror in yourself what it is you deserve and that you do have the right um to, to be loved All right. and to feel safe we're going to take a call from sig and run sig Hello. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, uh, also, because it's Women's Month, because I do believe that that this kind of abuse, this bullying, this mafia kind of uh, power exertion on 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 the weak uh, is 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 it, it's a political uh, syndrome in our country as well. And 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 I do believe that that's where it all starts from is inside the family, where I believe it's not just a quarter of 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 families in in the world in the world uh, it's a third of families in the world where where, where, where wives and children are being abused shamelessly and 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 it's got to be exposed if, as, as much as it can and but 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 what's more important is is that we must um, be able to uh, realize that this is the the downfall of civilization <laughs> Really, uh, because it gets exported in in terms of mafia and corruption and and power abuse. That's okay. what it's all about: power abuse that is being exported from the family. These people marry uh, the same kind of power abusers because they think this is this is uh, the children of these families marry the same kind of power abusers because they think this is what males are about. This is right. what fathers should be, right. and they, and it's worse when you mm-hmm. don't even have fathers and you still get abused. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sig. Um, the, the impact, the start, I suppose, starting from the family. You know, again, is it the chicken or the egg? Mm. And, uh, you know, ultimately it's about how do you take personal responsibility for ensuring that you take care of your mind, your body and your soul, um, that you that you constantly take check take stock of the social relationships that you have and the, the internal relationship that you formed with yourself and, and your partner so it's that it's, it's how you take responsibility and ownership for yourself mm. as well as recognizing um you know that you do have a voice and 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 and, and really being sure that that the person that you're with whether it's your partner whether it's the relationship you have with your, your children whether it's whether it's a societal problem you know everyone needs to take ownership whether it's an internal one as well as a societal one everyone needs to take take stock of of, of really recognizing the bill of rights and knowing where you stand within that and what stance you take uh, here's an SMS uh, from someone who signs as a man in KZN. It says, I'm being harassed by my ex fiance She calls me and threatens me with killing herself. Mm-hmm. She tells me no woman will ever take her place. We have a child. Mm-hmm. So interesting call, SMS. Um, abuse does not, like we said, only affect women and children, but also men. Um, I think men in this in this era of feeling very disempowered in fact you know with with the exchange of gender equality with a shift in um patriarch 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 um society in the past with um society kind of taking taking stock of trying to find the balance i, I think to some degree some women have taken it to the other extreme as well mm. so um it really is across the board and one of the, what, what the SMS is really saying is that you can control someone through manipulation. It yeah. doesn't have to be a direct physical yeah. attack. It could be threatening yourself or your partner, partner or ex-partner's life, making the person feel somehow powerless and helpless to stay in that relationship. So then you feel like you don't really have a choice. Mm. And when you feel like you and don't have a choice and guilty mm. and that you feel like it's your fault, mm. that the outcome of that person's life is really up to you, that is also a form of abuse. What does he do? I mean, you know, there's he has a child um, in place uh, with, I suppose, with this. Yeah, he's got a child with this ex-fiance, and she's. This is emotional abuse. Absolutely. So I think it's the SMS call, um, SMS person needs to recognise that this person is somehow. Um, it's called passive aggressive kind of behaviour. But the first thing is to recognise is that this child needs to be safe. If this child is in in jeopardy or you feel that your ex-partner is psychologically not well perhaps you could reach out to the person and 
and help this person understand that that you will be there for this child and that there will always be a connection between the two two of you and that you have a responsibility, both of you, for this child. However, this relationship did not work for whatever reasons. And then to encourage this person to go and get the right help um, Mm. and to maybe access their support structures and letting them know that this is what this person is communicating yeah, actually maybe call their friends or family. Absolutely. And they might not be aware that that's, that's um, taking place. Um, Linda Hall says, what about codependency double abuse? Again, co- what, what, well, how we can describe codependency is when two people feel like they cannot live without each other or that mm. um, they, they feel that their sense of, of, of worth worth is dependent on each other. So it's just a sense of I depend on you for my life to exist. And that is quite a heavy phenomenon to carry and often some people get it quite wrong so they either live very separately and very um kind of attacking each other so people are in relationships where they're attacking each other and there's a constant fueling and and violence that's in in, in excess anger in excess or they they kind of infatuated with each other or they feel that they cannot live live a, an, an interdependent lifestyle and that is also quite unhealthy because often what happens is when we infatuated with something mm. the, then then uh, to some degree we're not living in, in a real reality based relationship and at some point this bubble will burst yeah and then there's going to be the fallout for both of you absolutely absolutely and again what is it saying about yourself that mm. i cannot care for myself i don't I, I don't have the capacity to care for myself. Um, I was Self-esteem is really about the ability to know that you can recognize your own sense of worth independent of anybody else, that you're able to have your own visions and dreams, that you're able to adequately and healthily um, fend for yourself, that you're able to uh, see yourself as a, as a as a person that can contribute to this world, whether it's being a mother or a, mm. a parent or a partner or somebody that is is able to work and that can function in this world. A, a codependent person feels that that other they are dependent on the other person to really exist. And when we're talking, I mean, one of the the, the points that that Sig was making and a point you made about um, children who grow up in homes where abuse is happening, um, they are, if I'm not mistaken, more likely to. Perpetuated later on. Absolutely, and therefore it's so important that when you have and you recognise that some of the symptoms that we've been talking about, that you have come from a home where there has been, whether it's very physical or overt abuse or subtle abuse, to really take the time to step back and heal the wounds of the past, so that you do not let that spill over into your current relationship. Mm. To take ownership of that and to recognise that number one, you do deserve. What is it that you do deserve as a human being? That you do deserve love and to be happy without the fear of, 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 of being belittled or destroyed by your partner. That you have the freedom of access of movement, the freedom to express yourself, that you do have the, the, the right and the, and the, um, the, 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 the need to be, to be with a partner that, mm. that you can connect that with that is loving and valued mm. and respected. Absolutely. And, and the message that one sends uh, to, to children. In, in, in a home like that. Also, I think people need to be aware. Um, and I suppose also the socialization, if you've got a boy child and, and a girl child, how you treat them so that the young boy understands that, you know, the, the cleaning is not just for women. No, ab- um, no. And that, you know, these defined roles that we have in society. And I think we all, we all kind of can be aware that we're all moving towards equality, not equality in terms of... Um, it's an equal form of treatment. It's an equal form of, of we all take responsibility for the home that we create. We mm. all take ownership of the chores that we have at home. We, we, everyone takes ownership of, of the vision that we want to create for, for our house, household. And that each person individually has a right to what it is they, 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 they rightfully deserve, and that is love and respect. Mm. And that's the message and that we all need to feel safe and we all need to work towards safety. And if something doesn't feel safe for you, that you have the right to express it. Mm. Find somebody in your community, whether it's a friend, a family, a toll-free number, whether it's seeking professional help. To stop abuse means you need to, t- to stop it right now. You and need to actually take, take, you need to take control of, 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 of ending it. And that, and that you can recognize in, 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 in this forum today that you do have a right to be loved and respected and that it, this isn't your fault. Um, and that by you staying in, in this relationship, enabling and you perpetuating this and you really um, creating a, a dynamic in the future where your children potentially also uh, draw this kind of behavior into your space with about power and control rather than about equality and respect. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks, Joanna.
That's uh, Joanna Clavoli. She's a clinical psychologist and director of the Psych Matters Family Therapy Centre in Bedford View. Uh, you can call her on 11 I <laughs> almost said the wrong thing. 3576. 3576. 3576.